dog threw a tantrum yesterday when I stacked it, right? Mine did. Well, yours just sulked, but yours threw a tantrum. Yeah. Yeah. Bring your dog over here, please. Okay, so the next thing we're working on is presentation. So in presentation, remember the judge needs to see the top line, the center line, from the withers down to the foot, the rear, the angulation, all these different things need to be lined up so the judge can evaluate this dog. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and stack this dog. And once you're ready, tell me you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. And keep that head straight. That's right. Okay, I'm going to put some poker chips here. That's right. Good. Okay, and then lift your dog off the table. Okay, so when we look at these poker chips and the way that they're kind of lined up there without dumping them off, you can see this foot is back a little wow. bit, so that needs That's to go like that. that. Yeah. yeah, so it takes two people. You can do that with table dogs. You can do this with dogs on the ground. And then you can kind of see each dog will, will naturally set themselves up a certain way. Sometimes they'll have a three feet that are perfect and only one foot's off. So you know when you stack that dog, you just have to move that one foot. Now let's talk about foot placement. If you're a, I don't want to say normal dog, but if you're not a bulldog, <laughs> okay, you go from the shoulders straight down. And the shoulders, so it's not coming in like this, and it's not going out like this. From the shoulders straight down like this, then that's where that poker chip should be. And then from the shoulders straight down, that's where this poker chip could be. Now, your rear foot. If you take the inside of your rear foot and the outside of your front foot, that's what the judge should see from the front. From the rear, I should look at this and I should see the back of four feet. If I slide this straight back, that's how my dog should be stacked. Like that. Now, in the rear, the hawk should be straight up and down from viewed from the side. And you should see proper angulation for that breed whether it's extreme, moderate, whatever, it's whatever your breed standard says. Now, for a bulldog, that's a bulldog. <laughs> exact same thing, but totally opposite. So, so the bulldog is wider at the front and small, and thank you. Are you're, you're gonna call me? <laughs> she says, I raise you $500. <laughs> okay, now the, one of the biggest problems I see in the bulldog ring is they stack their dogs like that. And when the judge looks at that and can't see all four feet, then knocks you out of the running right there. And I would say that most, most of these breeds, their foot placement is very important, but the bulldog ring, like I said, they have you switch in so many different ways, and so it gives you more opportunities to mess your dog up. So this is what we're gonna focus on. Now, let me show you a couple of tricks that will help you with this. Okay, so, good. If you have a table and a table dog, when you before you put that dog on the table you test your table take your right foot and kick that leg right there and when you kick that leg look at how it made that stable kind of evens all that stuff out but you can sit there and pull it all day long and it won't be stable you magically kick it and then all of a sudden it's stable i don't know why it's just some <laughs> physics thing <laughs> okay put your dog up on the table All right, can I borrow your dog? Absolutely. Okay, so you go ahead and go to the front. Okay. Now, what do you do with this leash right here? You just drop it. Get it out of the way. You don't mess with it. Everybody wants to do all this cute, fancy stuff and put it down my arm and things like that. Don't worry about it. Just get it out of there, just like this. Now, I want to have this dog's head straight. And let me show you some common mistakes. The first thing is, when you go to move that front foot, 
when people grab this leg, the dog shoots that out like that. And then when you set that down, now it's too far forward. That happens all the time. Now the best way to do this, and some of you will not do this, so I'm gonna show you one time really good. See those fingers right there? I'm gonna put those fingers on the front right here. Here's the shoulder, upper arm, this is the leg. So right where the upper arm and the leg are attached, there's a little crease right here. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it back so it's off the table. When the dog sets that down, it puts it directly under where the withers are. I don't have to do anything. The dog automatically sets that down right where it needs to be. I'll show you again. Fingers in front, I lift backwards, and when I set that down, look at where the legs are in relation to the withers. Right where it needs to be. Yep, I know. That's because we don't have this head straight and all that day one stuff done yet. Okay, when I go to do the rear, I hate it when I see people do this. Because when they do that, you lose this angulation right here. Also, when you take and you move a foot like that, you lose that angulation. You are being a butthead. There you go. That's why I picked this one. Okay, to get good angulation on your rear, in the palm of my hand, I put that right where that hawk joint is. That way I support this hawk. I'm going to bring up and forward, and that's called breaking the stifle. Then when I set this down, look at the angulation that I have on that rear now. So simple to do that. Now if you have a dog that's being a little fussy, then what you can do is when you load that and set that, you're going to push back against that foot and that puts weight on it so they can't move it. But when you lift this leg and you set this down, their weight is balanced on the other three legs, so now they can move this foot very easily. But if you load that weight after you set a foot, it makes it more difficult. Break the stifle, set this down, load the weight on the foot. Yes. Well, not. I'm pushing forward to put a bend in that stifle. And then when I set this down and push that weight, then they can't lift that up. But then it gives you a good curve right here where your stifle is at. Otherwise, what happens, you know, like when you set this like that, then all of a sudden you lose that angulation right there. You just loving this with that stink eye, huh? Yes. Let me see your teeth. Oh, that was good. Okay. So in your front should be foot straight down from the withers. Tip of the butt should come straight down and that's where the front of the rear foot should be from viewed from the side. When I look from the front, I should be able to come down from my shoulder, straight down should be where that foot is at. Now, let's say we have a dog that wants to toe out like this. When you do this, you're gonna push this back, pull the muzzle this way, set that down, it'll be nice and straight because the toes follow the nose. Now, what I see most people do in the ring is they have their dog's face into the ring and they set that down and look what happens. Now I'm towed into the ring like that. So you can do everything that you need to do while directing your dog and not screwing the leg into the ground like you see some people do. Now I can also, if she, acts, if she moves a foot, I can shift weight off right here and kind of just learn how to balance this and walk this back and forth to get her to set that foot. If you have a table dog, it's good to have, don't mess up. There, ah, 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 I knew you were gonna do that. Okay, head straight, head straight, easy, head straight, good job. But get this head straight on the ground, so when you put this dog on the table, you're already in control of that head at that point. Don't put it, throw it on the table like you see everybody else do and fidget for a half an hour. That drives the judges crazy. Learn how to stack, if you have a table dog, this direction. 
because you're going to run into a judge that's going to ask you to stack this way. It's easier to go over the dogs for them sometimes. Also, don't mess up. Good. Ah, 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 ah. Learn how to stack your dog on this side. Because there may be an opportunity where the judge says, I want to see these dogs being compared. So they'll put a dog there and they'll put a dog here. So you have to learn to stack right here. Also, but wait, there's more. You're loving this, aren't you? Says, really? Okay, so let's say you have a tiny little old judge. And you go to some of these shows that have these monster tables that are big enough for Newfoundland. What you want to do is you want to stack your dog at the corner, outside corner of that table. Because now it's easier for that judge to examine this dog. But what a lot of people do is they'll set their dog here and it's very difficult for some of these judges to feel all the parts that they need to feel. And I want to give that judge an opportunity to really fall in love with this dog. The other thing that's nice about this is I'm not right next to my dog. When you stack your dog and you stand back, is it easier to see the dog now? Yep. Now, if I stack my dog, ah, uh, you are just a bitch, aren't you? <laughs> if I stack my dog like this, and I go like that, what's the difference? The dog gets lost in the, uh, exactly. Oh yeah, flashy stuff, or let's say your top is like not a whole top. <laughs> right. And it's like, here's my dog. <laughs> Right, yeah, it's like, well, you go get dressed and come back. Okay, so when you stand away from this dog, now the judge can see the dog and you're not part of that right there. But when you're close to the dog... And aren't they more apt to leave? Yes, when you're like this, and if, they're, if you really haven't worked on yesterday's work, then they'll lean against you. A lot of the, the dogs on the ground will do that too. So get away from your dogs. Let the judges see those dogs. You know, get to a point where you can get this dog so it's trained and rock steady. And then the judge can admire these dogs. And when they want to come over and look at the bite from this position, you can go straight into the bite, just like that. Now, there are two other uh, ways to do the head straight. Most people, when they're showing dogs, like to do this. But you have no control and it's rude because now you're cutting off that circulation on the throat. She's like, really? <laughs> so I want to do this position because now I'm free and clear of that throat. But here you can do kind of like a combination of the two. So I'm going to come in from behind and now I can do this. And really control that head. Usually if you have to have ears, you can do that too and your throat's still free and clear. Now, another position, this is later on, once you guys get really, really good and have a great relationship with your dog, what you're going to do, head straight. Ooh, you thought about it. Good, once you and your dog start to get a really good relationship, you're gonna take your thumb and your forefinger and you're going to pinch right where this ring is at. Yeah, let's go to the ground. And you're simply going to go head straight, head straight. Can't do this on her right now, but you're just tapping on the side of that jaw. And you get lighter and lighter with that. Go ahead and really twist yourself. Yeah, good. And as you bump on the side of that jaw, you're teaching the dog head straight in a way that you can use that to your advantage later on. The way that's going to come into your advantage is you can get to the end of six feet in a stack, and if that dog gets distracted, you go head straight, head straight. And where is that tapping the dog? Right there in the same spot. So those are the three positions to do the head straight there. You are so sexy. Yes, you are. All right, my dear. Okay, owner, come back. 
And <laughs> she's like, I can't believe you did that to me. Nope. Okay, so according to speed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we're gonna get set up for presentation. So for your dogs on the ground, sometimes it's easier to walk them into a free stack, just like you were taught yesterday, stay, and then come underneath to do the head straight so I can examine the dog. Good, good, good. Okay, free stack. Okay, nice. Now say stay, stay. and now do the head straight. See how nice that works? Good. Okay, so now when I look at this dog here, I look at my top line. Okay, I look at my withers. And for my withers, <laughs> she moved. Because she she's like, I'm going to make my mom look bad right now. <laughs> okay, my angulation here is looking a little straight. So what I want you to do mm -hmm. is I want you to support the palm where the hock joint is. Head straight. You're going to bring that forward to break that stifle. And you're going to set this foot Head straight. just on the outside of that foot to give her a little more angulation. Head straight. You set the back leg as No, I usually set the front. Okay, you're grabbing from below. So what I want you to do is I want you to support this hawk joint. See, they feel like they have more support like that. Break the stifle, set the foot down. There you go. Perfect. Get the muzzle down. Head straight. That's a good job. Give her a hand. Good. Okay, go off to the side. Let me have my next dog, please. Okay, you're hiding your hand and you're looking at your dog. So you'll free stack and then you'll put your dog on the table. Okay, so that's not, not, it's not bad, but that pulled, yeah, you I pulled again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so go ahead and get the head straight and then put the dog on the table. By getting this head straight on the ground, it really helps you on the table because now you're in control of this dog. Woo. Oh, yep, just good. drop it. That's straight. Good, and she went to the corner. Very nice. Good. Good. That's straight. Good. Good. See, I can feel what I normally could see with a dog without coat. See, I, I know my withers are here, so I know I have to come down straight from the shoulders. I can feel my foot. When I know my withers are here, I can come down from this front, and I can feel where the front of that foot is and the back of the foot, and that's going to be right here. And then when I come down from this butt here, I can come down and see if my foot's there. I can come here and feel where my hawk is. So even though I have all that hair, I can still see that same diagram of that dog with the Rottweiler. See how that works? So you're doing a great job there. Okay, give her a hand. Let me have my next dog, please. Very nice, very nice, beautiful. So free stack, good, good. You're running out of room. Now, let me show you something. Can I get him to not sit? Well, I'll show you why. Because you're giving him the command to sit. Oh. Right. So what you need to do is say stay. Look at my hands. This is my lead hand. Okay. So you're saying here's my bait, and you're taking this hand, and you're Sorry, saying. Sorry, I'm baiting this one too. Okay. Okay, so you're taking this hand and you're saying stay, and you're putting this one right behind, okay. just like that. Okay, so come in and do that again. Good, good, good. See, that's perfect right there. Of course, that's my puppy, so. 
<laughs> okay, turn, lean forward, walk backwards, and stand. Okay, don't worry about that. See, now you've got, ah, you've got this hand with the bait right there. So look at me. Okay. So in my left hand, I'm saying, here's the bait, but you can't have it. Okay. See how I'm separated? Mm -hmm. So you're putting the bait in front of the stop sign and all that dog sees is that bait. It doesn't see that stop sign. Okay. The bait's behind the stop sign. Okay. Okay, so do that again and try not to go so high. Okay. Good job, good job. You got that part down. Good. Coming into the ring, now turn around. Lean forward, walk backwards and stand. There it is. Good, that's okay, that's okay. The dog's pushing you. Okay, now, which one is forward? The bait or the stop sign? The bait. Look at me, left hand with bait, okay. stop sign. Here's my bait, but you can't have it. You're going like this, here's the bait, go ahead and oh, follow me. Too far. Right, okay. and you're putting the bait in front of the stop sign. Okay, nope. Push this out. Okay. It's like, here's my bait, but you can't have it. Stay back. So this is behind the stop sign. Okay. So lean forward. Walk backwards, stand. There it is, good, good, stay. Look at that. See how amazing that is? Good girl. <laughs> okay, praise your dog and give a treat. Okay, did you see the difference? Yes. Isn't it amazing how when we communicate properly, the dogs respond to that? So what happened there is she was saying, here's the bait, come get it. And so the dog is, keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, or when she went like this, this is body language to tell the dog to sit. So I have the bait here, you can see it, but stay back. And that means stay. And since they're in line, the dog's in focus. But if you do this, the dog's going to not look, know where to look. Okay, so I want you to do that again. And then I want you to do the head straight so I can examine the dog. So go ahead and come in and do that again. Oh, I know. I love you. <laughs> Good, good. Okay, turn, get in front, and say stand. Good, stay. Beautiful, okay, yeah, I know, you're beautiful. Okay, so do the head straight position, and here's where the fight will begin. Over here. Come back, there, that's perfect. So my bait should still be in my... In your lead hand, okay. in your mouth, in a pocket. Okay. Okay. All right. Nope. Your right hand needs to come in here. Mm -hmm. Drop all this stuff. Remember I said here's where the fight's going to start? Yes. Okay. So your lead hand is doing this head straight. And we're going to have a little tantrum because we're a newfie puppy. And here's our tantrum. So when they have the tantrum, I just let them have that tantrum there. Head straight. Keep pulling. You're doing good, yeah. Keep pulling. There you go. Let them have that tantrum. Get that head straight. All you're focused on right now is that head straight. And when this dog relaxes, then I'm gonna say good, and then I'm gonna go ahead and focus on presenting. Isn't that funny, I said the tantrum's gonna start? But this dog looks so sweet before we did this right here. <laughs> yep. Are you done? Not yet. He says, I'm not gonna look at you, Uncle Eric. You're being mean right now. Nope. I'm going to look as far away as I can. Dum, da, dum, 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 da, dum, 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 
Head straight. Good. Uh uh. Head straight. Head straight. Good. You're doing good. Uh uh. Head straight. You're doing good. Yes, you are. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Head straight. Head straight. Ah! Uh. Head straight. Ah! Uh. Head straight. Ah! Uh. Like Head straight. <laughs> the, the crazy eyes. Ah! <laughs> uh. Head straight. Look at all that twisting and turning. I'm going to be here till Monday. <laughs> Relax a little bit. There you go. There you go. Good job. That was good. As soon as we start to relax, then I praise and do it over again. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to, to go ahead and get the dog set up and show me the head straight position. Okay, lead with the lead hand. Okay. Okay, now go ahead and do the head straight. Let me see your hand position. Okay, yep, these two fingers, not this one. Just the two fingers and next the to pinky. the pinky. And the pinky goes over here. Mm -hmm. Over this part. Okay, so close those three fingers. Thumb and forefinger underneath the jaw. And that's okay. and then the fun begins. Okay. You go find a well-bred Newfie puppy and you try to do the head straight and this is going to happen every single time. Guarantee you. But this is also going to help you when you do grooming sessions too. Mm -hmm. Head straight. And then you kind of relax a little bit and then if the dog relaxes you praise and say good job. Yeah, we're going to have to work on this. Yep, you are. Okay, so go have fun yeah. over there. Practice head straight. Now, this is something that's not fun, but you have to do it to get past this point. Because if you let a Newfoundland puppy turn into a Newfoundland without getting that head straight, you're going to have a lot of fun in the ring. Okay, let's see my next dog in, please. You're going to free stack first, and then you're going to do the hand stack on the table. Good, good. Okay, free stack first. Nice. Ooh, you can do it. I saw those ears like, oh, I'm not going to do that. Okay, go ahead and put your dog on the table. Get your head straight first before the dog gets on the table. Ah, shot glass. Okay, there you go. Good. There you go. Now, there's a thing, okay, I need your attention up here. There's a thing called rock training. And it usually works good if you're in like a garage and you have like a tin uh, garage door. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna work on getting expression with your dog. That's and great. so you, you need something that's gonna make some sound. And you take that rock, you put it in front of their nose, and you throw it against that door, and it's going to go bang, and they're going to get expression. Well, when the judge comes, you can't throw rocks at your judge. <laughs> I'm sure you get a cool sound. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> but when you get used to doing that, they're going to think you just threw it really far. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, so I get their attention, I throw it, and then you get expression, you get them to come up over their front, but this is something you wanna do on a daily basis over and over and over again. When they give those ears and expression that they're, they're supposed to give, you give them a treat and you keep doing that from day to day. And again, the next time you come in like this and you go like that, they're gonna give ears automatically because they only need it for that second. And then the judge can see what they need to see and it gives you another tool that you can use in the ring. Oh and that's called rock training right oh there. Okay, that was good. Give her a hand. All right. Good boy. I want you to get directly in front of the dog, shoulders square, and stack your dog straight on, yep. right in front of you. So the dog's gonna be here and facing that direction. Yep, now get directly in front of the dog. Okay, and if your shoulders are square, your dog will be square. But you'll see some people, when they stack their bulldogs, they're off to the side. And when they're off to the side, your dog will turn and not be square. So what the judge is looking at here is top line, head plane, and then they come back here and they're gonna check to see where those front feet out. So they want to see from the shoulder straight down, shoulder straight down, and then inside of the front foot should be the outside of the rear foot inside of the front foot should be the outside of the rear foot and then now you're stacked correctly just like that now go ahead and switch over to the side all right give him a hand that was awesome. This is the best, so I know. Group two? Group two? Okay. Who has the best dog here? Oh, wow. We're a little spirited today now, aren't we? <laughs> All right. I want you to set your dog right up here, for exam, please. Good. Okay. So here we have a collie. So how are you supposed to have these dogs set up for exam? You're supposed to self-stack. Self-stack. Now, when you're self-stacking, you're going like this. Right. Look at your foot placement. It's awful. It's awful. So if you get in front of your dog like this, come stand. So we teach these dogs to stand in front. Look at the difference in their yeah, front feet that's now. Nice. And then you say stay, and then you move out of the way. Does that make more sense? But if we come in like this, then dogs creep. And I really hate to see that lead being pulled like that because remember, dogs will pull against opposing force. So when you pull like this, what's that gonna teach them to do? Pull. Pull into that. So if you stay in front of your dogs and you stack them, then their foot placement will be straight. Okay, so go ahead and try that again. And then, let me make sure I have this right. Yep. I step over here. Yes, okay. and let the judge examine okay. at that point. So you lean forward, walk backwards, and stand. There you go. Beautiful. Much better like that. Stay. Yep. And that's where you have to, you got to work on that. Again, it, it's not going to be perfect. Don't worry about that. But you want to have your mechanics down. So you lean forward, you walk backwards, and stand. And that's how you teach those dogs to free stack. Yes. I notice when you do that, you spread your leg out. Yes. I'm just comfortable. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Okay. That was that. That was a great, great observation right there. When if when I listen up, guys, listen up. When I lean forward and I walk backwards and I stand, I have a wide stance. And the reason why I have a wide stance is because I don't want my dog to go past me this way or past me that way. It keeps him right here in the center, just yeah. like that. But if I go like this, sometimes they'll want to drift off to this side or this side. So great job. Did you get a t-shirt yesterday? Okay, then you get uh, another t-shirt today. <laughs> yeah, I knew that's what was going through. He's going to give me a stripping knife. He's going to give me a strip. No, I got another t-shirt. <laughs>
Okay, much better like that. See, that's beautiful. Okay, take this dog all the way around to the end, please. Yay. <laughs> so again, perfect demonstration of a dog that still needs that day one work before we get to this. Okay, so right now we're going to say that's okay right there, but I'm, let me show you a couple of things that might help a little bit better. Now, everybody pay attention here. When she put the dog on the table first, the dog said, okay, this is all my territory right here. So I would, on the ground, get this head straight, like this, head straight, up, head straight, head straight, good, very nice, uh-uh, head straight, uh, head straight, very good, very good, very, uh-uh, go ahead and move it back. There you go. Good. Good. That was good. That was good. Get the head straight again. Head straight. Off the table. Down to the ground. And then get the dog ready to gate. So if you have that head straight before they get onto the table, who's in control? If you place them on the table before you get the head straight, who's in control? They are. Okay. So again, don't expect perfection. You know, we're just starting this stuff right now. They're going to move feet. They're going to twist their bodies. That's not what the purpose of today is. The purpose of today is learning techniques to teach them to be perfect in the ring. Okay, so come back. Go ahead and do the head straight on the ground and then put her on the table. Okay, don't lift her like that. Support her body over, over the top. So what you're going to do is you're going to reach with this hand, mm -hmm. drop that, that lead, and you're going to support her like this to lift her. Okay. So put her back on the ground and then lift her back up again. And do it slow and easy because if you do it at record speed, uh -huh. then they're like, whoa, <laughs> where'd the ground go? Right. Nope. There, yep. Head straight. Head straight. Yep. Good. Now, one thing I, w I want you to notice is the whole time you were lifting her up, where was her paw? Which one? This one. I don't it was know. right here. Oh, I didn't even notice. Yeah, she did. Yeah. <laughs> so these are little ways that they sneak this in, but see how much better she's being for you? Much better. And you got that head straight. Mm -hmm. So good. All right. Let's go ahead and take her down and back, please. Now, from this position with the head straight, I can examine the bite here, or you could show me the bite. So what you would do from here is you could go ahead and take your thumb, pull that bottom portion down, and take your other hand to pull those lips up, and I can see that bite perfectly. What you don't want to do is show the bite to your judge with your head like this because now all they see is the back of your head. <laughs> and that's why they get frustrated and they just jump in and start showing the, looking at the bite themselves because they get tired of looking at the back, back of beginner's heads right there. Okay, so that is a really good job. You did fantastic. Okay, can I borrow your doggy for a second? You certainly can. Okay, all right guys, I want everybody's eyes up here for a second. Now, a couple of things about etiquette on stacking dogs. You want it easy for your judge to examine. So if I have a table dog, one of the things I might want to do is put it on the outside corner of the table like this so it's easier for that judge to examine. Okay. The other big advantage that you have here is now you can stand away from this dog. And now the judge can see just the dog. But some people, when they stack the dogs, uh -uh, 
They stack it where it's convenient for them like this and look at the difference of how this looks. Now you can see me and the dog and you don't want to see that. You can still, as you back away, look at the difference there. Now you see the dog. So there's a couple little things that you want to think about, especially if you have an older, smaller judge. Think about her having to reach across this table to examine this dog. You want them on that outside corner so it's more convenient for that judge to find all those parts. So that's the way I would practice. Now the other thing, if you have a table dog, you also want to be able to practice, ah, 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 ah. don't you dare, practice stacking this way. Because this is the way Ed Biven will have you stack. Especially if you show that Ed Biven. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you're stacking the same way all the time, then the dog expects that. You want to be able to take this dog and stack different ways. Now, again, if you have a table dog, you want to be able to stack like this. And you also want to be able to stack like this. Head straight. Head straight. Because there may be a situation where the judge says, I want to see these two dogs on the table. So keep that in mind that when you're practicing, even if you don't have just a table dog, uh, 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 if you have a dog that you're stacking on the ground, you want to practice stacking the right way and the left way, just in case. Big, big old giant, pur I know, it's hard to see because it's big and purple. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in a mood today. You guys caused that. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. Good job. Beautiful. You got boxed in, didn't you? Yeah. Yep. That's okay. You don't have to give her any room. She's just learning that she should not go that close. Do you guys see what happened right there? Now, if you would have stopped here then you could have split that difference right there. So that was a really good lesson. Good job. Good job. Okay, what did you guys notice with that right there? You did really good. You just stood there and you blended into the background. So I was able to see the expression on that dog right there. But some of you were trying to make noise and was competing against your judge. I'm trying to see expression. You're making the noise and the dogs don't know where to look. So when the dog's coming down the line making noise, they want to see the expression of that dog. And that's why it's very important that when you guys are practicing, you have no eye contact. You want them to be able to shift over and look at the judge if the judge wants them like that. Okay? All right. Everybody go ahead and praise your dog. Yes. Group two, put your dogs away. Okay, so the first dog I want stacked right in between these two cones right here. So rear feet there, front feet here, right in the middle of those two cones. I am. <laughs> okay, so you have to get your dog stable so it doesn't move a foot. And so the ass isn't crooked. That's, well, that's, stack them however you want. Stay. Stay. Okay, walk them out. They're very consistent. Why do you think they're too close in the front though? Well, they're, that's the least of the problem, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. So, so, the so the big problem is for some reason your dog is looking like this. Why do you think your dog is looking like this? Because I had these two cones here and they confused me. Yes, that's it. 
Okay, <laughs> see, you can imagine a dog standing here and the dog's looking like that. Yeah, yeah, I can. And so, he was. And he was. Yeah, he was. So that hand off to the side, it needs to be in front of you. Because you're training, you're creating muscle memory for this dog to kick this foot out like this, which he's doing. Always. Yep, that's because you pull your hand that direction and you stand crooked off to the side. So you're creating that muscle memory right there. This is like the Rottweiler. Remember the Rottweiler? Hello. The Rottweiler had very bad muscle memory. So on the dog standing here, what you're doing, go ahead and stand over here for a second, is you consistently pull this leash and stand with your shoulders this way. And look at that. That's exactly what's creating that right there. What would fix that is if you were standing directly in front with your shoulders square with both of your hands in front of you. And that would teach this dog to be straight. Okay. But because she is off on her shoulders and pulls this leash this way, that causes this foot to kick out in this direction. So you're creating a muscle memory where this foot never stacks correctly. And it never does. Yes. Yep. I know. <laughs> so this is going to give you a little idea of what you're doing with your dogs when people put that down on the ground like that. So two people, you can free stack your dog, you can hand stack your dog, and you keep doing it over and over. And if you consistently see a pattern like that, then you need to self-evaluate and say, what's causing this problem? And this is a really, really nice dog, but it always wants to kick that foot out and it's created a muscle memory to do that. And look at where your hand's at again. <laughs> so to fix that rear, to bring that muscle memory back, I would put this dog on a treadmill. And then you need to make sure that you're consistent with your hand in front and your shoulders are square. So I'm standing right in front of the treadmill, is what you're saying? No. He needs to get new muscle memory. Because oh, yeah. you've created that muscle memory by the way he stands now. Sure. Be because of your hand being off to the side. And your shoulders being crooked like that. So every time you stand in front of this dog, you need to have your shoulders square and your hands in front of you. You know, they've duct taped me. That'll work. And, and then work this, work this dog on a treadmill so he, he corrects that rear muscle memory. Okay. And then you have to be very aware that your hand is not off to the side and your shoulders aren't crooked like this. Okay. And if you do that, you can bring this dog back again. Because this is a very nice dog and he looks really nice in the ring. But when the judge sees that foot go off like that, that's going to be big points against you right there. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. This stuff will tell you so much. Okay. That's okay, I saw where it's at. Okay, take your dog off. That's your dog. So, is that straight? That's about right. Okay. Now, let's, let's look at... I, ah. <laughs> okay. So, let's take a look at this right here. Can you guys see this? This chip here on the inside of this foot should be out here. So if I'm a judge, I should be able to see the front of all four of those feet from the front. From the rear, I should be able to see all back, every back of all four feet. So this one was more like this. And this one was like that. So your back needs to be a little wider. I would take the front just a little closer like that. So this is going to come out like this. And this one's going to come out like that. 
And that's more of what that should look like right there. I was, just, I was told when I started about a fist distance. Between yeah, but, and then but each the dog is going to be different. So when you put this dog back up again, facing that direction, So when you stack your dog, do that fist thing that you were taught. Okay, and, that, and that's where it's supposed to be right there? Okay, everybody look up here. I'm gonna show you something important. When I go from this shoulder, I should be going straight down to that foot. She goes out. So you can't use that fist thing. The judge wants to feel this straight down like this. That's gonna dictate your front. Then when you stack this rear, I like to start stacking dogs on something that has lines. Because then I can figure out where my line is on the outside of this foot and that same line, the inside of my rear foot should be on. So if you have lines on here, then you can start to learn how to stack the dog yourself. But you have to look in a mirror, take a photograph, and when you go here, this should go straight down. It, now this part here is actually wider than her shoulders. So that should actually come in just a little bit more so that's straight down okay. like that. And when I come in as a judge and I look at this, I see this foot's off just a little bit right there. I move that one, so I'm gonna move this one here. Now that looks fantastic. That's right. Much better. But the way you were stacking here, I can't fit my yep. fist in there. Yep. So when you were stacking her before, she was out like that. And so when the judge is judging that, they're like, that doesn't look right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's why these poker chips get areas, whether it's a, a dog on the ground, or table and get something with some grids on it so you can learn how to stack these dogs properly there. You can even get like a short little level like they use in construction and you can put that level on that shoulder and go straight down and figure out where that's supposed to be. So there's a lot of things that you can do that will teach you all this fine tuned stuff in stacking and presenting your dogs. Okay. So now you learned something as far as how to stack that dog. All right, take this dog all the way to the end. Let's put the quiet one up on the table. You're a turd, huh? <laughs> Look at that stink eye. <laughs> I know, I love that. I'm not looking at her. I know you're not. You're doing really good. She's a brat. Yes, she is. Okay, pick her up. So what do you think about that? Well, that's off. And this is off. And that's off. Because this needs to be more Over. like that. Mm -hmm. This needs to be more like this. And this those needs need to, be to even. those need to be even. So you need to be more like that right there. Okay. Okay. Now the way you do this and learn from it is you stack the dog, let somebody do that. Take the dog off, gate him around a little bit, bring him back, stack him again, and use these poker chips multiple times. And a lot of times you will find that only one foot is off. So when you have that one foot off, then you know that wherever she stands like that, you just need to move this foot over a little and you can fix that instead of fixing all four feet. One of the things I hate to see the most is when it's either one of, my, one of my students or I have a situation where I'm judging is I see a dog that has feet in correct position and people move those feet in an incorrect position. That's very frustrating. So if you practice this right here, you'll know where that particular dog consistently places their feet and you know what not to mess with. Okay, lift your dog up. That foot back there. Mm-hmm. He always, it's that foot, I always see that foot's a problem. 
Okay, so let's look at this right here. Okay, that's so not straight. So that's not straight, that should come out. These aren't straight there. And this foot should come out like this, just a little bit and back. Just like, and that fixes that right there. But one of the things is, you know, you had a line right here. Okay. Guys, how many times do they have lines on the tables? Usually they have those bridges on those tables. Oh, yeah. Use that to your advantage right there. Use that as a tool. Okay. You know, when you see a line coming back right here, then you know you got to set this that foot, foot with, that. with that foot right there. Because it's easy for you to stand back and see like this. Yeah. It's difficult for you to see this. Right. I so agree. if they have those lines on the table, use those lines. Would that make sense? I wish I was here for seven days. <laughs> this is so cool. Okay. Let me have this dog right here. Let me have this dog right here. I want to see you guys go down and back and stack your front feet of your dogs on these little thingy bobbers right here. Okay, so down and back. See if you can turn around. Turn her around so she's facing me. Yep. So that means bring her, swing her around. There you go. There you go. Oh, there we go. Yay! Okay, take these two dogs around, please. Get her hand, get your hand. Okay, all the way around. Awesome. Okay, next two dogs, down and back, and then stack their front feet on the pads. to the end. Okay, you need to swing in front, lean forward, walk backwards, and tell a dog stand. Ooh. Yay! <laughs> Around to the end. We have a situation where we have two different sized dogs, two different sized speeds of gait. Which dog is going to cover more ground? This one. So you're going to go down and back and you're probably going to make it to the end. When you see her dog turn, you come back this way and watch what happens. Okay, down and back. Turn, turn. You waited too long. I did? No, she did. Okay, but see how close that was right there? If you have a dog that's a slower speed than the other dog, you want to turn at the exact same time that other dog turns, and you will make it back at the exact same time. Isn't that cool? It is. Yeah. Because a lot of times what people will do is this dog here will continue on all that distance, and then so now the judge is focusing on this one because it's coming back and not paying attention to what's going on with you over there. So you lose in that whole real estate thing. Okay, try to make your dogs stack here. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> if you just walk backwards, it'll drop right on those cones. Yeah. <laughs> close, close. Yay! Good. Okay. Can I borrow her for a second? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Good. All right. So let's look at a couple of tips here. First of all, what we want as far as foot placement goes is on this particular breed, it needs to be from the withers and the foot straight down. Sometimes we have a tendency to get that off just a little bit. The best way to do that is to take your fingers like this, put it in front of this leg and lift it off the ground. And then as we come forward and it touches, where is that foot now? Right underneath the withers, right where it needs to be. Head straight, then take the other foot and match that. Just like that. Beautiful. Now, when you came to this rear and you move this rear back, what's going to happen is this dog is going to lose turn of stifle lose the angulation it needs back there. Knock it off. Go ahead and get on this side so she can see you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the dog by the hawk joint here and support this hawk. Bring the leg forward till the stifle breaks and then set that foot down where it needs to be. Then I'll push weight onto that foot. Look at all that turn of stifle right there. This is what most people do. And look at the difference of that. So as I'm setting this foot down, I'm looking at where that inside of that rear foot should be in relation to where my front foot is. So I know that's in the perfect spot. Head straight. Then I set this one to match that one right there. There we go. Good job! That was awesome! Yay! She says, I did that? <laughs> Mama's got all the cookies. Okay, so I want you guys to learn that and practice that whether you have a table dog or a dog on the ground so you get perfect fronts and perfect rears. Okay, so from here, you should be able to show me the bite with that head straight position. So let me see your bite. Good. Yep, so put your thumb in the bottom and the thumb on the top, and I can see that bite there. And I can see the bite to the see, side. That's what my one finger wants to come around to help me, I guess. Well, don't let it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it it's not welcome. It's good. It's good. So thumb and thumb. Thumb and thumb. There you go. Now I can see. And side to side. Very nice. Good job. Beautiful. Beautiful. What's that? Okay, you leave the back alone, but look at your front. He moved it. There you go. Good. Okay, let me see your bite, please. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Put your dog away, please. Great job. See, she got the head straight first. Very nice. That is gorgeous. Okay, let me see the bite. Good, beautiful teeth. Very nice. Okay, put this one away. Beautiful job. So we'll start off with the two, and I'll kick these over here so for, they'll be easier for you to grab. Okay, so we're going to start off with the two. And in the beginning, you can manipulate his feet and put his feet on the stacking blocks. But I would suggest as you start to get more advanced with this, you may want to go ahead and get him to actually 
free stack on all four, but that's going to take some time. The other thing I want to mention to people, that's too far back, bring it forward a little bit. Okay, the other thing I want to mention to people is don't rush. Let them take their time on learning these exercises. You know, don't think that, that it failed if you don't get them to do things right away. Sometimes it's going to take five weeks, six weeks, ten weeks, whatever it takes. Let them do that. But here we got Ponder standing on all four of these single stacking pads, which is really, really cool. And look at how good he's being. That's awesome. Okay, the next evolution for this is we can take the front ones and flip them upside down so they're going to be a little bit more unstable. We may only be able to get his front feet to start off with these. <laughs> See, if he stands on those edges, this is going to force him to stand more towards the center because if he stands on the edges, he can't put any weight on him. But you can see there that this gives you a, like a whole different tool to work with. And it's great to teach them to stack on these balancing pads because these are going to help develop their muscle and their body core. <clears throat> Whereas if you just put them on stacking blocks, it doesn't do that. Okay, again, we're not going to worry about perfection at this point. Okay, guys, so this is Eric Salas, Ponder, and Maddie at Mind Your Manners, and this is week two part, which is presentation. Mm -hmm.